So hi everyone and welcome to this video on an actual example of the Leon Tiff input output uh, model which we're discussing here at Mathematical Economics in our module on the economic applications of matrix algebra. So we have here uh, a technology matrix which is A, this is that matrix, and a final demand vector which is D, right? So uh, we're asked a, a sequence of questions and we'll answer each one of them. And I think that by the end of this, you'll get the lecture that we've had before, which will be linked uh, at the end of this video uh, and much better because this is an actual mathematical example. So the first one says that we need to interpret the entries of the second column. Right. So let's interpret the entries of the second column. Okay. So how do we do that? Okay. So letter A. Okay. So A. So essentially, all this is saying is since this is a technology matrix, you think of it in terms of a peso or a dollar. So to produce. Okay. So to produce one peso worth of because this is column two. This is industry two. Oh, uh, industry two whose uh, output, industry two requires, requires 20 cents worth of industry one, one's output. Okay, so note that's, uh, that's this 0 0.20 there. It also needs 0 0.25 cents, uh, oops, cents of its own output worth, sorry, worth of its own output and 10 cents worth of industry three's output, industry three's output. Okay, and that's how to uh, interpret the columns of uh, column two of this technology matrix. So that answers A, which is just a simple concept check. Let's go to B. So B is a bit uh, tedious of a solution, and uh, it just basically asks, okay, determine the output levels of the industries, uh, which are one, two, and three in this case. So to solve B, okay, let's first get the uh, Leontief matrix, which is I minus A. Note that we uh, this is matrix A, so we can easily do that. So to get I minus A, we just subtract an identity matrix, right? Minus the matrix that we have here, so that's 0 0.15, oops, 0 0.20, 0 0.05, 0.25, uh, sorry, sorry, 0 0.10, 0 0.25, 0 0.15, 0 0.05, 0 0.10, and 0 0.20, right? We're going to subtract the two, and we're going to get uh, still positive numbers uh, in the diagonal because you'll see 0 0.15, 0 0.25, and 0 0.20 are less than one, but definitely negative elsewhere. So you get 0 0.85, negative 0.20, negative 0 0.05, negative 0 0.10, 0 0.75, negative 0 0.15, uh, 0 0.80, negative 0 0.10, negative 0 0.05. Right? Okay, so uh, the next step for you is to, you need, because we're going to solve for things, uh, we need to get the inverse eventually, right? So we need to get, uh, if we're going to solve, right, to solve for uh, I minus A inverse, part of that is get, we need to get the determinant of the, uh, of I minus A because we would need to use that and eventually multiply it to the adjoint and to, to get the inverse. So, to do that, right? So, so determinant of uh, I minus A, this is equal to, um, so 0 0.85, uh, negative 0 0.20, negative 0 0.05, negative 0 0.15, 0 0.80, 0 
negative 0 0.10, 0 0.75, negative 0 0.1085, negative 0 0.05. We're gonna uh, we're gonna use the basket weave method. So we copy the first two columns, 0 0.85, negative 0 0.20. Then you have zero negative 0 0.10, 0 0.75, negative 0 0.10, negative 0 0.05. Okay, so this one times this one times this one, you get 0 0.51. This one times this one times this one, point 0.20 times point, negative point 0.20 times negative point 0.15 times negative point 0.05, that's negative 0 0.0015 minus, you multiply all of that and you get minus 0 0.0005, right? And you subtract that from the upper, di upper uh, diagonal. So this one times this one times that one, you get uh, 0 0.0019 plus uh, you're going to do this one times this one times that one, right? Uh, and you get uh, 0 0.0128 plus the last one, it will be a positive number. This one will be 0 0.016 and you will get 0 0.4773. So that's the determinant. Okay, now we need to get the cofactor matrix. So, uh, we need to first get the coefficient matrix and we get the cofactor by taking the transpose of it all, right? So uh, if you're gonna sort of uh, do this one, you need to get the cofactor one. So if you recall, you need to get like uh, a set of uh, uh, minors here. So it's uh, in order for you, for example, to get uh, this uh, one here, you're gonna have to um, get the determinant, which is this one times this one. So 0.25 times 0.20 minus 0.10 times 0.15, M11 will be uh, equal to uh, 0 0.585. And you're gonna do that for all of this. So this one, so M21 will be equal to this one times this one. And you're gonna get, uh, so I'll just write everything down. 165. The determinant M31, this is equal to 0 0.0675. Then uh, M12, that's equal to negative 0 0.0875. M22 equal to 0 0.6775. M33, I'm sorry, M32, that's equal to negative 0 0.1325. Then you have here M13, this is equal to 0 0.0475. Then you have M23, uh, which is negative 0 0.095. Then you have M33, uh, which is equal to 0 0.6175, right? And you can put all of these in a matrix, but remember, all right, remember, okay, um, we, this one already applied the sign. So remember, there's an order to that. But the cofactor matrix is the transpose of that. So we take the transpose of it all. So CT, right? CT will be equal to the transpose of, uh, if you treat this as like, uh, if you treat this as one big matrix, you get the transpose of that, that's CT. You get uh, 0 0.585 then uh, 0 0.165, 0 0.0675, 0 0.1325, 0 0.6175, 0 0.6775, 0 0.095, 0 0.0875, 0 0.0475, 0 okay. and that's that transpose. Then finally, because you have that, you can now solve for the inverse, I minus A inverse, which is just one over the determinant times the adjoint, which is that C transpose that you have. So this is one over um, 0 0.4733 times C transpose, and you're going to get um, 1.2256, 0 0.1833, 0 0.0995, 0 0.3457, uh, 1, 
0.2776 and 1.2937 right so you're gonna have that one there then uh as you if you recall right your goal is remember number two is determine the output levels well the output levels uh, are equal to the input levels x right this input output and uh essentially right uh this one will be equal to, as we said, I, uh, let me use a different color just to differentiate. Uh, let me use green. So remember, X is equal to I minus A inverse times D, right? You have D, D is this one here, right? So I minus A inverse, that's going to be this one. So let me just rewrite it quickly, 1.2256. 0 0.1833, 0 0.0995, 0 0.3457, 0 1.4194, 0 0.1990, 0 0.1414, 0 0.2776, 1.2937 times the demand vector, which is equal to 400, right? 400, 1,000, 1,500. Right, then all you need to do is j just solve for it and multiply it, and you're gonna be left. Uh, this is a three by three matrix, this is a three by one, therefore, your final answer will be a three by one, which is essentially what we're looking for. If you do that, you're gonna get 1048.04, 1909.12, and 2179.35. Right, and that's the answer to two. These are the output levels required for industries one, two, and three. So this is the output level of industry one. This is the output of industry two, output of industry three. Next question. Using the answer in B, calculate the amount of primary input required to produce the output uh, levels that we determined. So we're now asked how much of the primary input do we need to be able to produce these quantity, these outputs here? Well, to do that, we can, it's just simple, right? Uh, it, 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 you just need to multiply these, right, by uh, your, uh, by, the primary, uh, calculate the amount of primary inputs. But, uh, so you just need to multiply th these things. Okay? You just need to multiply these things uh, by a proportion, right? By a proportion. So let's calculate that one. So uh, number three, let me use uh, purple, three. Okay, so we're done with the B. So using a calculate the proportion of primary inputs. Okay, so uh if you if you will notice th this one right will be equal to um three so the primary input primary input of sector one one will be equal to 0 0.7 0 0.70 times 1048.04 and this will be equal to uh, 733.628. Right? That will be equal to that one there, right? So that's gonna be equal to that. Right? Then uh, if, if we move on, okay, this one, the primary input, primary input of uh, sector two, will be equal to 0 0.45 times uh, 1909.12, right? This is equal to 859.104, quite simple. And then the last one is primary input of uh, sector, uh, sector three, that's gonna be equal to 0 0.60, times 2179.35. That's going to be equal to 
let me just check here if I'm correct, right? So this one is gonna be, uh, okay, so I am uh, is correct. So let's, let's first try to determine how we got these things. So how did we get this? Well, it just goes like this. If you go back to your technology matrix and you add these things, so 0.15 plus 0.10 plus 0.05, you get 0.30. Then 0.2 plus 0.25 plus 0.10, you get 0.55. Then this one is 0.15, you have here, this is 35.40. This is 0.40. And uh, these are things that come from the sectors, right? This comes from sector one, two, and three. Your primary inputs happen outside the sectors, but remember, it should all sum up to one, right? So it only this one only sums up to 0.3, meaning the primary input must be 0.7. For this one, the primary input must be 0.45. For this one, the primary input must be 0.6, right? So if that's the case, uh, that's how we got these numbers here. Right, so 0.7 is the remaining, which is your primary input for sector one. This one will be your primary input for sector two and three, at least the coefficient of it. And then you multiply it to the output level because it's input output. These two quantities are related and you get these answers here. So that's how to get the primary um, primary input required to produce the output level of all of. So it's after, we didn't actually answer the question. If it's uh, find the uh, primary input required to produce the output level of all sectors, you have to add all these things up. So the total of these, the total, that's going to be equal to 2,900.342. And that answers the question that 2,900 is the amount of primary input required to produce the output level of all industries. And uh, so that's letter C. Okay, we're done with C. Let's use now red. Okay, so last, determine the changes in these outputs if final demands for industries 1, 2, and 3 increase by 40 and 70 respectively, and the final demand for industry 3 de uh, decrease by 100. That's simple. Okay, so just follow this particular formula for number 4, uh, or letter D, the change in X, right, is equal to I minus A inverse times the change in D, right? Your change in X is just a change in X1, change in X2, change in X3. That's how these things will need to adjust. This is equal to I minus A inverse. We've solved for that. That's 1.2256, 0 0.3457, 0 0.1414, 0 0.2776, 1.2937, 0 0.1990. Again, just recall and then do this on your own time. Right, uh, 194, then uh, 0 0.0995, 0 0.1833. Multiply this by the change in D. So, if you recall sector one from the problem, okay, the uh, the final demand of sector one, uh, of industry one, uh, increased by 40, and for sector two, it's by 70. And then the last sector or the last industry decreases by 100. So you multiply by that. And essentially, you just solve, right? So this is just matrix multiplication, and you're going to get the changes in the uh, outputs, right? So you can get delta x1, delta x2, delta x3 by just solving, by just doing matrix multiplication. And this one will be equal to, if you solve for it, 59.083. Then you have uh, 78.93, negative 111.46. Therefore, sector uh, one's uh, output will increase by 49.083, which is more than the increase of 40. Then 70, uh, industry two will increase by 78.93, which is more than the increase of 70. Then industry three will uh, decline it out, its output by 111.46, which is again more than the decline of 100. And that's how you link uh, input and output. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this particular lecture. Uh, I'm sorry that we went through the computation because what I want really is for you to get acquainted with how to solve it, not the nitty gritty of having to solve it all. So thank you for your attention and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.